thank you. I, I hope I can talk. This is the fault of the Red Eye Boys. It took me to some kid bar last night, and I've just about completely lost my voice, but I'm going to try to choke it out. <clears throat> well, the big news this week is liberals favor democracy in the Middle East. <laughs> that, where were they back when we were taking out the guy with the rape rooms? The one who gassed his own people, who invaded his neighbors, who tried to assassinate a president of the United States? The one who crawled out of a spider hole looking like Charlie Sheen after a three-day bender? <laughs> Liberals could not have been less interested in democracy when it came to taking out Saddam Hussein and installing a democracy. So, it's really adorable seeing them get all choked up about democracy now. But you know, if, if, if they want to get rid of overbearing, out-of-touch despots, could we start with Janet Napolitano? <laughs> Why was it again they didn't want to get rid of Saddam Hussein? Oh yes, that's right, because after we invaded, we found out he didn't have stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction. He had weapons of mass destruction, but liberals indignantly told us, well, he couldn't have had weapons of stockpiles, weapons of mass destruction for another five years. Five long years. Well, we invaded in March 2003, so by my calculations, that means by March 2008, Israel would be gone and Saddam would be in total control of the Middle East. Thanks, liberals. But now, liberals are shocked and appalled to discover there's a, there's a dictator in the Middle East. Mubarak supports U.S. policy, used his army to, to fight Islamic terrorists, and he rec recognized Israel's right to exist. Or as liberals call it, three strikes and you're out. <laughs> oh, also he shut down Google and do not stand between a liberal and his internet porn. <laughs> Liberals angrily cite the unemployment numbers in Egypt to prove that Mubarak is a beast who must be gotten rid of. Uh, did they by any chance see the Jan January um, employment numbers for the U.S.? The only employment sectors that are growing are uh, medical marijuana cashiers and ho Hollywood living sober coaches. <laughs> You want to talk about job security? Larry King lost his job. Are we one jobs report away from liberals rioting in the streets? Oh, you know, another country where Obama could not have cared less about democracy. Yes, that's right, Iran. Iran is ideal for democracy. It has a huge, young, pro-Western, educated populace and happens to be led by a messianic, holocaust-denying lunatic. <laughs> so liberals say, why up upset that apple cart? Everything's fine. <laughs> when Ahmadinejad held an election in 2009 and then stole it, um, Iranian students were upset that an election had been stolen from them in, the, in some pro Ahmadinejad districts. The voting was over 100%. <laughs> oh no, wait, I'm sorry. I was thinking of Al Franken's election in Minnesota. <laughs> But the Iranian election in 2009 was pretty crooked, too. And liberals could not care less. Uh, even when the Iranian protester, Netta, standing peacefully on the street, was shot dead in the internet video that went around the world, Obama responded forcefully by going out for an ice cream cone. <laughs> he didn't acknowledge Netta's existence, but Egyptians take to the street and start decapitating mummies, and Obama says, we hear your voices. <laughs> he hears their voices? He couldn't hear our voices, and we were protesting on the streets of Washington, D.C. <laughs> but, say, 
as long as Obama can hear their voices, maybe you should ask them what they think of Obamacare. <laughs> maybe, maybe the Egyptians can talk him out of it. Or maybe we needed to decapitate mummies. Try that next time. To summarize, liberals did not want democracy in North Korea, Vietnam, China, Russia, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, all of the Soviet satellites, East Germany, Cuba, Nicaragua, Grenada, Minnesota. <laughs> but now a loyal American ally comes under attack and they are burning for democracy. Time and again, Democrats' fecklessness has terrified Americans' allies and emboldened its enemies. In fact, oh, I think that was the official slogan for the State Department under Jimmy Carter. <laughs> I have it right here, the U.S. Department of State emboldening Americans' enemies and terrifying America's allies since 1976. <laughs> The incontrovertible lesson of history is do not allow Democrats anywhere near foreign policy. And you know, I, I know what you're thinking, but nope, not even to keep them away from domestic policy. <laughs> it's always a problem when people who don't really like America are asked to defend it. For 50 years, Democrats have, have harbored traitors, have hobnobbed with American enemies, um, who have, have attacked America's allies. Uh, they've lost wars, they've lost continents to communism. As Joe McCarthy said, if liberals were merely stupid, the laws of probability would dictate that at least some of their decisions serve the interests of the United States. <laughs> let's, let's review. A little more of the Democrats' history in the Middle East, or as I call it, the Great Pyramid Scheme. <laughs> there was Jimmy Carter's masterful handling of, of the crisis in Iran, uh, leading America to betray another loyal ally, the Shah of Iran, and allowing lunatics to take control of that country. Even as Carter was backstabbing America's loyal ally, the Shah was assuring those around him, don't worry, America has always been our friend. They'll stand by us now. Sadly, there was no one to warn the Shah. There's a Democrat in the White House, run for your life! <laughs> that little exercise in democracy led to American citizens being held hostage for 444 days until the great Ronald Reagan was inaugurated. Yes, America was standing tall under Carter. <laughs> in another show of America's force in the world, uh, when the Russians invaded Afghanistan, Jimmy Carter did not go for an ice cream cone, but he struck a forceful blow by withdrawing from the Olympics. And thus was a fearsome blow stuck, struck against little 14-year-old girls who had spent their lives training for the Olympics. <laughs> Carter also claimed he had been attacked by a giant swimming rabbit. That doesn't really have anything to do with foreign policy, but I thought you should know. But in honor of, you know, the new spirit of civility, I thought I'd point out that under mean de device of George Bush, a nuclear sub was named after Jimmy Carter, the USS Jimmy Carter. Uh, it's a good sub, but there are some problems. Periscope works only in hindsight. <laughs> Life rafts are subject to hyperinflation. And whenever it's in a US port, it immediately attacks the United States. In Carter's defense, uh, since he left office, there has not been a single attack on a United States citizen by a giant swimming rabbit. <laughs> For the young people in the audience, now you know that when, why when people compare Obama to Jimmy Carter, it's not a compliment. <laughs> it's hard to believe now, but when Obama was running for president, he presented himself as a moderate Democrat. He was no, no drama Obama, just a young, attractive 14-year-old without a record to be nailed on. 
And then he got into office and immediately turned over our entire healthcare system to the Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> no. Now those interminable lines at the DMV. Now imagine you're standing in one of those lines, but this time you're in a hospital gown that's open and back. That's Obamacare. <laughs> Obama says uh, the price of health insurance will come down if, if only it's mandatory. It's like, it's like the guy has never ordered food from a hotel before. <laughs> When you have no choice, does the price go up or down? <laughs> and uh, now Republicans are going to have to repeal national health care just so we can find out what's not in it. <laughs> On immigration, the president's plan is to find the states that are enforcing our immigration laws and sue them until they stop. <laughs> I love this argument that we need a path to citizenship. Path to citizenship. We have a path to citizenship. It's called legal immigration. <laughs> And after the Democrats got clobbered in November elections, they've all coalesced around the idea that the problem was they were outspent, oh, it was all that corporate money. Yes, if only the Democrats could, could get a hold of, of some part of the mainstream media, just, just a tiny crevice, a toehold to hang on to for dear life. The way things are going, Obama want to look, might want to look into becoming the president of Egypt. Nobody would complain about him being a Muslim then. <laughs> but let's end on a happy note before I take your questions. Wasn't it great to see Republicans and Democrats sitting together at the State of the Union address? <laughs> I guess that explains why all over Washington they were sold out of those t-shirts, I'm with stupid. <laughs> I really liked seeing Nancy Pelosi out in the audience and not doing leg squats behind the president. But the strangest thing was seeing Obama not on a golf course. Every time I look up, the guy's on the golf course. It's like he's trying to get his handicap down below his approval numbers. <laughs> Thank you, you've been a great audience. Don't go to law school and I'll take your questions now. <laughs>